In this video, I just want to give you a quick overview of the maze generator feature of the puzzle generator. Now, the first thing to do in PowerPoint is to have a blank slide. So if you've got any placeholders on it like this, just delete them. And then we click puzzle generator at the top. And then we want to do what we want to do is choose our trim size. So for this example, I'm just going to go for 8.5 by 11. And if we click puzzles and then maze now our first option here is for a game explanation or how to this is um, simply uh, how to play the game if you want to include this on your first page just tick the little box here if you don't leave it blank you can of course edit this and add your own text as well and click continue now on top here we have our color picker this gives us the option to choose our path color. So that's our path through the maze in the solution. Our start and end color as well. So our little symbols at the start and at the end. Now with KDP, obviously you want to use, um, probably you want to use either some shade of gray or black. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change the start color to a black and I'm gonna do the end color to a dark gray. Now our first option here is for our grid titles. That's the title above each maze we create. So at the moment it's maze. So it'll be maze one, maze two, maze three, and so on. Our next option here is our font size. That's the size of the title. And then we ha have the option for the number of pages we want to create. So let me do that on five. Here we can start the numbering at uh, whatever we want. So at one, it'll be maze one, maze two, maze three. At 10, it'll be maze 10, maze 11, maze 12, and so on. Our next option here is our difficulty level. Now again, the harder the difficulty, the longer the maze will take to create. Let's just start on a very easy one. Now our next option here is we have an option to create a maze with blocks or with walls. Now walls is gonna be what you're uh, typically used to if I show you that here. Just cancel off the first one. Here are our walls. So that's a maze that you uh, might typically expect to see normally. And then if we go back into here and our block mazes, I like this, uh, made up of lots of little squares or blocks. Now if we go back into maze, now when we choose um, uh, to have our mazes with walls, we have different options for the path. Now, as you might have seen down the side, our first option is for a field path. So what this looks like is um, a complete block path all the way through for our solution here. You see here our little arrows for the in and the out. So we go back into maze and I'll show you the, um, the other path. So you can have a line, that's as if someone's drawn the line for the solution. I'll quickly show you that one. Here, as you can see, the line goes through the maze as if someone's drawn a solution in like that. So if we go back into the maze feature again, our next option is to choose the start and the end point of the maze. By default, it's the top left and bottom right, but you can also choose to have the start and end points randomly assigned. That means they can be anywhere on the maze, or you can choose to have the top and bottom center, which let me just show you. So the start and end is always in the center like that. If we go back into the mazes, our next option here is to is for the, the ratio of the grid. At the moment, 
it's on square and it will always be a square regardless of the trim size. If you do adapt to a page ratio, you'll, if you've got a rectangle um, sort of trim size, you'll get a rectangle grid like this. So you'll have a rectangle grid like this. We're going back into maze again. Our next option, which um, if you're publishing on KDP is pretty essential, is to add our left and right margins. You can do anything between zero and one. Let's do one. And our final two, option here, two options here are to either hide the titles and levels or just the titles and levels and to hide the start and end positions. That's the arrows if you so wish. So if I just create these puzzles quickly. I'm just gonna show you a quick, um, a few other uh, more advanced options you might like to use. So as you can see now our mazes are generated. The title here is very, very close to the um, top of the puzzle. So what you can do here is you can use this tool to move it up. And what that will do, that will do the same across every single slide. And for example, you think, if, you think, if you feel the, um, if you feel the size of the level is too small, you've got this option here to change individual fonts. And then you can change the size. So if I go for 20, Now again, that will make the changes all the way through. Now, if I can't click it, let's just zoom in a little bit to the top. And then what we're going to do is just move that up a bit. A little bit more. And then we have our difficulty there. So these tools, what they do, every change you make using these tools will reflect across all your different pages here. Now, there is another option. If you want to do, um, obviously, in the default settings, you don't get a choice to choose how many puzzles or how many solutions you want to do per page. So if you want to do a custom amount, what you do is you go into Maze, and then I hide the titles and levels, uh, take off the left and right margins here. Now, if you are wanting to do uh, square mazes, I would choose a square uh, trim size, a rectangle, obviously do a rectangle trim size. Other than that, it doesn't really matter. So. I'm going to have adapt to page ratio to make sure I get a rectangle uh, maze and I'm going to do uh, I'm going to do 10 actually I'll do um, 20 mazes just to show you uh, for example so let's create our mazes wait for them to create Almost there. And then what we want to do is use the bolt export tool here. So first of all, Want to export the sides, slides. Now, initially, 
I'm just going to do the actual mazes without solutions. So do 1 to 20, call it mazes, keep the quality the default. And then I'm going to create a folder, mazes test. And inside here, mazes. Click OK. Just wait for that to export. And then I'm going to export again. This time, we're going to do the solutions. And then go back to our um, folder here. Type in solutions. And then save them in there. And then what we're going to do, we're just going to delete all these slides. We're going to create a new blank slide. We're going to choose our trim size. I'm going to stick with 8.5 by 11. And then we're going to go to bulk import images. And then we're going to choose our mazes first. Now, as you can see here, you've got a lot, um, lot more options than you do in the maze um, generator default settings, you can choose anything from one to 20 here. Um, as these are our mazes, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna do with four mazes per page. Here you can set a title, so I'm gonna do maze. Now down the bottom here, you can set different margins and spacing. I just attend, tend to tick this box here, which is to um, optimize the spacing between them. Click OK. And as you can see, we've got our four mazes per page here. And then what I'm now going to do is again, I'm going to bulk import images and I'm going to do the solutions. And now, because we're doing solutions, I should change the title here to solution and I'm going to go up to eight per page. Again, keeping this ticked down here, click OK. And now you can see our solutions, eight mazes per page. I hope this quick overview of the um, maze generator feature of the puzzle generator helps you get started and creating mazes. Thanks for watching.